Hello and welcome back to the second last video in the series SQL Server on Amazon RDS. I'm John McCormack and today we're going to be talking about how multi-AZ works for SQL Server on RDS. So what multi-AZ is, is it allows you to have a copy of your instance in a different availability zone. The technology used is either database mirroring or availability groups depending on the version and edition of SQL Server that you're using. So when you set up the instance, if you decide that you want to have multi-AZ enabled simply by either checking the box or by passing in that parameter to your PowerShell or command line command, then it will set it up for you. There's really no more that you need to do in order to set that up. It's available in standard or the enterprise edition of SQL Server, so you won't get it on the on the free tier, on the web edition or express edition. So with RDS on SQL Server, if you do have a failover, the endpoint remains the same. So you don't need to change your application, you don't need to reconfigure any connections. Uh, they'll use the same endpoint when you fail onto the replica. It's just all done for you. Things like your users, logins and permissions are automatically replicated to the secondary as well. And if there is any sort of hardware problem that's caused the instance to fail over, then that will be fixed on your behalf. So there's nothing for you to do um, in order to get the instance back online. If your RDS instance is not currently enabled for multi-AZ, then it can be added to existing instances as well. There are a few restrictions with multi-AZ. So cross-region multi-AZ isn't supported. You can't use the secondary instance as a read replica. SQL agent jobs are not replicated, so you probably want some way of scripting them out so they can be recreated on the on the replica. Now, if you're on SQL Server 2017 Enterprise Edition 14.00.3049.1 or later, or 2016 Enterprise Edition 13.00.5216.0 or later, then you will be using availability groups to provide you with your multi-AZ functionality. If you're not, then it's going to be using database mirroring. If you're on an instance that has mirroring and you're now eligible for the availability groups, then you can make that change if you so desire. You can't rename a database when multi-AZ is enabled. So first you need to turn off multi-AZ temporarily, do the database rename, and then turn multi-AZ back on for the instance. That covers the main points with regards to how multi-AZ works for SQL Server RDS. What I would urge you to do is read the link on the blog post that has a lot more information on it about all the ins and outs of using multi-AZ and how it works. There's no point in me adding them all to slides or reading them out verbatim, but if you click on the link and read the post, you'll find some really useful information there. Um, that pretty much concludes this video. Um, the final one, which is out tomorrow, is all about monitoring your SQL Server RDS instance using CloudWatch. So I'll see you for that one.